All right, guys, welcome to a new episode of the Type 1 Lifting Podcast. Um, this guest, I would love to be in his shoes because uh, he is a t-shirt printing guy for Vindicate. His name is Travis uh, Bellinghausen. How are you doing? Good, how are you? I got that last name right, right? You did. Right, First awesome. try. Yeah, yeah. I, I literally would listen to another podcast like three times just to make sure I got it right. You, usually people will stop after the I-N-G. They're like, Bellinghaus, what? Like just exactly how it's spelled. It's not that hard. Yeah, yeah. They, they usually throw an R on the end of it. Yeah, I think that's so, like a northeastern thing. I don't know. That, like we put R's or S's on after everything. So yeah. Nope, you did good. Uh, nice awesome, work. awesome. So um, I didn't tell you this in the beginning, but we actually have a little bit of a little bit of com the commonality. Like we have some stuff okay. in common. So you're a graphic designer. Yep. I graduated college with a graphic design degree. Okay. And okay. so you have a t-shirt company. I have a t-shirt company. Obviously mine's not as big as yours, but I, you know, I want to get into the t-shirt business like in the beginning, but, um, and you also do CrossFit too. So that's three things sure. in common. So. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. It's one of those deals. Like I, I kick myself like every day that back in college, I didn't think to ever take a business class or an accounting class because it was like it was one of those I'm not, I'm not I don't plan on starting a business and sure enough here I am years yeah. later like oh this class is really would have paid off big time because I'm just learning as I go yeah yeah so so what made you get into that field like are you were you very like artistic like back when you were like younger yeah always always drawing and stuff back in school um so I I mean my god I started all like freehand drawing and i'm a terrible freehand drawer i i can't illustrate or draw worth a damn yep um so i think it was my junior maybe senior year of high school when like photoshop came out so that's how old i am and it was photoshop when there wasn't even layers you li you literally had to be very careful about what you did mm -hmm. um so i didn't never touch the computer um, as far as design goes until I was a senior in high school. So that was in 94. Um, I'm 47. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's just evolved big time. Um, as far as what I've done throughout the years, went to school, had no interest in pretty much anything other than design. I, I played football, um, until I got injured in college. I got injured my freshman year. i herniated discs in my back so Oof. that kind of ended ended my uh my football career pretty mm -hmm. quickly uh, and I actually did that uh working out um in high school I herniated two discs in my back and ended up having to get cortisone injections just to get me through high school um and those got me by for quite a while and then went in I was playing linebacker in college went in for a hit my leg went numb and that ended my uh my college football career yeah, so. my mine ended mine ended in my sophomore year of college because I played college football too, and I got okay. I literally got see two, another thing in common. I know, I know, it's crazy. <laughs> uh, but uh, I I my concussions were my my thing, so I literally oh, got God. I got I got two concussions in the matter of a week and a half. So I got I I played, I got a concussion, and then I took a week off, and then I started back up at the next week because they cleared me. And I literally went because I was a defensive end, and so I literally okay. went between the tight end and the the tackle, and they both like crushed me with my head. Yeah. And yeah. so then I literally got another one, and I'm like, okay, oh I, I'm done, I'm done. And it's that, crazy because I I grew up skateboarding, biking, rollerblading, BMX, football. Never once had a concussion. I didn't get a concussion till I was in my uh, late thirties. Wow. And I, I mean, I was a lineman in high, in high school, I played tackle and center. So, I mean, it's head on collisions, every single play, mm -hmm. never got a concussion. Not That's once. crazy. Yeah. Never, never smacked my head skateboarding. I had a half pipe in my backyard, <laughs> never, never crashed, never wore a helmet of all things, rode four wheelers, mopeds, all that never hit my head once. Yeah, I think the total. Of I lucked concussion, out. Yeah, you definitely did luck out. I think the total of concussions that I've had are six. Oh so, God! So I no five or six. So I know I had three. I had four in one year, and then I know I had I I know wow. I had one in high school, and then I was playing uh, old man lacrosse, and I was doing because I've been playing lacrosse for like twenty three years, and so okay. um, 
So like I was doing a face off and the guy pushed my head to my shoulder and literally cracked my neck. And that's oh instantly how like I was, it was like, they, they, I went to the hospital I was working at up in Boston and they thought my brain, um, the artery to my going to my brain was dissected. Oh Jesus. And so they're like, you need, might need to go to surgery like right now. And so then like they're the, um, the head of like the whole CT department, like looked at it and said, no, he, he's, he's fine. He just got his bell rung. And so I was just like, that was like the one I was like, holy shit. Like I, <laughs> I'm, I'm probably going to get a huge line down the back of my neck just to get this thing. Fixed. Right. Something's got to change. I have a, I have a, you probably can't see. I have a scar right there. I have a, a fused, uh, C3 and C2 from a very stupid accident. Um, yeah. Dumb accident, uh, herniated disc, cracked a vertebrae and lost my right arm for almost five days like literally couldn't use it 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 was i was in the hospital and they would they would lift it up and they would say hold it there and it would just drop um so that was the only time i ever got a concussion was from that stupid accident dude that's crazy that yeah. is so now crazy. i should say diagnosed concussion i you know as yeah. a lineman i probably had a few but never never to the point where i was like throwing up or dizzy or anything like that but yeah i i never I'm threw the, up I, I just kept on forgetting stuff that's my, that was me yeah, okay see that's me now so i'm sure i've had a few concussions yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i have and the I, worst memory in the world i i think that's dad brain that that's like I, yeah, well, i'm that i'm too. i am i'm completely certain it's called dad brain because i forget everything now yeah. And I know, and I know you're, I just, I just leave mine as an excuse. I have too much shit going on. So I can't remember everything. True, true, true. It's, it's, that's all it is. Yeah. So I know, I know you're, you're a dad, you're a dad of three. Dude, I got three girls. Yeah. One's, uh, I got a 20, a 17 and a 14. So yeah, there's a, there's a whole lot of dad brain that goes on, yeah. especially when it's all girls. Yeah, of course. Oh, geez. Busy. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I like to, I like talking to people on my podcast that are dads. So I, I want to get what your experience is when you, when your daughter, your, the first daughter came out, like what was going through your head of that whole experience? Do you, do you remember that? It's weird. I think I heard, I think it was it Chase that was on yours. And he was like, he's like, everybody tells you, you're going to expect this. Oh my God, life changing moment and everything. So, good. and I was like, all right, that's my kid. Cool. It was <laughs> there. There really wasn't anything. I think, I think it was more of an, Oh, God, what have I gotten myself into? Yep, type yep. of thing. <laughs> it wasn't like this, and it, I I feel bad when I say it. it's like it wasn't like this instant, forever love and you are my everything thing. It was like, oh God, it's this is this is real. Yep, shit got real. Yeah, that was that was that was more of it, and I mean it was a long, long labor. Um, I Jesus, I don't even remember because we were induced. Um, so it was, and she didn't come fast. So it was like 12 hours or Oof. even more of just walking the hallways and doing everything we could. And, and, and it literally got to the point, lost my light. Um, literally got to the point with the doctor and the doctor was like, well, you're either going to have to push this baby out or we're going to have to go in and do the C-section. And yeah, my, my ex was a trooper and she's like, nope, we're getting this done. And she like, she had the, like the biggest stretched head. Cause they literally had to take the forceps and pull her out. Yeah. Which is like super um, dangerous so she, too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she had the, like a super long head for forever cone head. Um, so yeah, it was, it was quite the experience for the first one. First time. Yeah. It's quite traumatizing as a dad. You're like, Oh my God. I didn't know those things could look that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So my, my first ex, my first experience with like a, a like a, a birth before. So I I was working in the Air Force in the, in like I was a medical technician for the Air Force, and so I was down in Biloxi, Mississippi, doing an internship at their labor and delivery floor, floor for like a two days or something like that. Okay. And so one one lady was like, okay, we're gonna induce this girl and give this give her a C section, and so like oh, I'm I'm like six six, you know, two two twenty, like a big a bigger dude, and like. All the girls that are working there in the military were like five, six, like a buck, 40, 20, whatever. Like they were like right. really small. And so one of them looks at me and says, you know, if you pass out, like, we're not going to catch you. And I'm like, oh, you're on your own. That's, that's, that's <laughs> fine. And so I, I saw my first C-section where like, they, they like, like, obviously they put the uh, needle up the, up the spinal cord to like numb pretty much like the, anything from the nipple down. And so. Right. 
they're like, can you feel this, feel this, feel this? And I'm like, they're like, no, no, no. And then finally they cut open the belly and then they just ripped it open. And oh, I'm, and I'm sitting there like this and I hear the lady go, oh, and I'm like, holy shit. Holy, oh my God. Oh my God. This is insane. And then all of a sudden the, like the baby comes out and we're, I'm like, oh my gosh. Like I just saw my first, like my first birth. This oh my insane. God. So, yeah. I don't think I'd want to see somebody else's first. I'd be like, no, nope, I'm out. <laughs> Well, I really had no choice. Well, actually, no, I did have a but, choice, yeah, but I yeah. still went it went in for it. But yeah, like, um, but my wife had both at C sections because the first one, okay. um, m- the hers, the spinal cord, uh, not the spinal cord, the umbilical cord is wrapped around my son's neck, not like tight, okay. but it was just like hindering him to, you know, flip over head down. Yeah. And so yeah. they're like, yeah, we can't, you can't do anything about it. So you gotta, you yeah. gotta get one. And then she was uh, thinking about like doing a like, um, doing a regular pregnancy with the second one, and it was. She's they're like, everyone said, like, don't, don't do it. Just don't do it. Yeah. I think like most of them, once you have a C-section, they pretty much say you're going to do a C-section for all of them, mm-hmm. which that may not be true or not. I don't know, but that's one of the things you hear. I, luckily all of mine were, were just regular births. Yeah. My, uh, my, uh, 17 year old, so my 20 and my 17 are actually born on the same day. Cool. Was not, not planned, uh, by any means. Like I said, the first one was induced. So I don't know who screwed it up if it was her or the second one that screwed it all up but yeah we were we were having our birthday party third birthday party for the first one and everybody jokes you know tomorrow you're gonna go into labor because the the birthday was actually the next day which would have been a Sunday um and sure shit here she comes (laughs) she's like hey I'm gonna party too awesome (laughs) yeah yeah second one born on the on the exact same day yeah so um that's crazy like did you like use any advice from like other dads from like raising your kids that you actually tell other dads too or is it kind of like you just not, we went with it i pretty much went with it you know bought all the books and all that stuff and my i was actually the first one in my fa- so i have an older brother um and then a younger cousin who's basically like a sister she lived with us um throughout high school and and then on mm. and i was actually the first one to have kids so there was nobody like in the family to, <laughs> to give me advice. Um, no, it was, it was pretty much the books, you know, read up what you can and that's about it. And you're on your own. <laughs> and none, and none of my friends, only one of my other, I think, I think only one of my other friends had kids right around that same time and they had triplets. So trying to learn oh. anything from them was impossible. Yeah. First time out of the gate have triplets. And they, they so, were probably done after that, weren't they? They thought they so they had, they had been told originally that they couldn't. I'm trying to remember how it went. They couldn't have kids, so they so they uh, they had tried and just nothing would happen. So they got um, I can't think of what the medication is. Whatever they do to help you have kids, and they have three of them. Um, after that, they were told you'll never have kids again, and I think it was six years later here they are have another baby and <laughs> and just one so it wasn't one of those like episodes where you have you know once you have twins or triplets you're gonna have more you know the have multiples nope they only had one more but it was a surprise it was like hold on everybody told us we weren't gonna be able to have kids anymore mm-hmm. yeah and yeah. sure as shit they had another one it's crazy that happens because like i had actually had a neighbor of mine that actually Told, was told that they, they would never have kids and they they have one so and it's yeah it's crazy just like they think that everyone thinks they know, like the doctors know like okay this is definitely not going to happen then like some miracle miracle up there just happen. like happens yeah it, it can happen yeah but no if i got my i got my three and i'm done my my uh my dad is the youngest of 17 so i wasn't about to repeat that pattern Mm-mm. it's like no 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 you're, you're on your own on that one yeah. Yeah. I mean, is it, is it pretty, is it pretty, you live in Iowa too, correct? Uh, I live in Nebraska. Now. Nebraska. I'm sorry. Grew, grew yeah. Okay. In Nebraska now, yeah. yeah. So um, I've never been to Nebraska. So do they really typically, do they typically have like large families in that area or not, not, a really? not anymore? Yeah. No, I mean, I think it's just kind of an old school. There's my, so my, my middle daughter actually has a friend who they might be on their eighth or ninth. And other than that, 
you don't see too many this day and age that have them because god dang you can't afford it no there's no anymore. way there's no. no way no way <laughs> no so that so no it's it's pretty much the the you know two three four and then everybody's pretty much done yeah where well, i'm done a, i'm done after two there was like I, i'm not done no, anymore oh. It was amazing, like going from one to like one, it was like, oh my God, I don't know what I'm doing. Two was a piece of cake. And then three was like complete chaos. <laughs> it was it was like, oh, you're, you're outnumbered. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah, exactly. I only have two hands. I can't do anything here. And thankfully we, you know, they were spaced out enough, you know, on average about three years apart, three years and then, and then two and a half years. So, you know, they were old enough to kind of be moving around and do their own thing for the most part mm -hmm. where it wasn't like a bunch of like the people that have back-to-back -back babies like you guys are insane yeah there's no way no thanks no way <laughs> no i'm good i'm good no but uh so now i kind of wanted to talk about the t-shirt company that you have so your t-shirt company vindicate um you uh, you started with a friend of yours and you was mainly yep. towards it was mainly towards like a skateboarding side of like you know t-shirts and stuff like that what yep, was the, yep. i obviously you say you were like a big skateboarder but was that like always when you guys you and your buddy started it was it always leaning towards the skateboarding side of it or what was the whole yeah i mean that, yeah that's just what we were into he was he was more into bmx uh biking and i was doing skateboarding and it just the name and the direction of everything worked for both um so that was just the direction we went in because we were both interested in it um we had a local kid who was doing really good um skating so we kind of helped sponsor him um got some boards made get, get him shirts and stuff like that and, and it just it fizzled out uh back then and i'm not sure about now skateboarding was hard to break into as mm -hmm. far as skaters are very finicky about new brands and who they are um so it just it just kind of fizzled out and Steve was like, dude, if you want to do something with this, go for it. Give it. A, Cause I was, I was starting to go more towards um, mixed martial arts just for my general interest, um, not participating by any means, but it was just something that I was getting more into as I was getting older and doing less skating and biking. Um, I was paying more attention to mixed martial arts. So um, you said you said you were getting into the martial arts uh, art side, and um, and you actually were trying to sponsor a couple couple people. And I know you said in a previous podcast that like Reebok kind of took over um, the sponsoring, so you only were allowed to like certain things on your banner and like the the clothing and all that stuff. Yeah, it was literally like early on. It was like the wild west as far as sponsorships. Basically, if a, if a fighter could get a sponsor to pay for a spot on their shorts um, or their shirts or their the banners that they hang over the cage they were like cool you can do it we don't care um, as soon as the Reebok deal um, went into place with the UFC they basically cut out anything extra because they were trying to you know professionalize the sport for the most part a lot of people look at it as the UFC wanted all the money for the mm -hmm. most part because they weren't making money on these the, the sponsorships. I never had to pay anything to be on the banners other than what I was paying the fighter. Um, so the UFC wasn't getting a cut of that of that money. Um, so I mean, there was there was ups and downs as far as professionalizing it, which I understand. And now, I mean, you look at the UFC now, and it's a it's like a freaking NASCAR of sponsors that the UFC is getting all the money for and the spiders aren't. Yeah. So it kind of sucks, but, but yeah, it, it literally like as it started to, to take off was right when that Reebok deal happened. So it was another one that was like, Oh crap. Now what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. um, so I had started. So doing design, um, doing web design, doing photography and video and stuff. One of my coworkers, her, um, one of her friends had a CrossFit gym and they needed some, some website stuff done and some photos and video. Um, and I had never been to a CrossFit gym, even though it was funny because probably maybe a year, two years prior, my brother actually opened his CrossFit gym back home. Oh, cool. And I just, I was like, what the hell is this? This is goofy. <laughs> but these guys doing these stupid pull-ups and really fast squats mm -hmm. for this makes no sense. Cause I grew up, you know, the old football bodybuilding style. Um, so yeah, I had started doing this work for this CrossFit gym here in town and I had gone and filmed, I think it was in November. They did, it was a 
uh, called the Turkey Throwdown. So they did a uh, November competition and I had filmed a bunch of stuff during that competition. I was like, holy crap, this is crazy. Um, so they, and they had always told me like, hey, you're, you're doing all this work for us. You can come here anytime. It's joint, you know, free membership basically if we're doing all the, the, the website and design and film work and like finally in December, I was like, all right, I'll give it a try and see how it goes. And sure enough, did it and was hooked ever since. Very cool. Very cool. So um, were, were you still with your partner <laughs> at that time or like did you already, were you already split with? No, the, he, okay. yeah, he had, he had pretty much, we never had anything formal. Um, I mean, we didn't even have an LLC at the, at the point where we had started. He was just like, you want to take it, go with it. Cool. Have fun. Good luck. And <laughs> never look back. Yeah. He's never come back at me or anything. I mean, my goal at some point is to bring him back on because he's, st- he's an amazing designer. He did the logo. Um, we just had different styles as far as what direction we wanted to go. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, eventually I'll, I'll get him back in at some point. Very cool. Gotta, gotta get to that point where I can start hiring people. Yeah. So um, with, with type one lifting, how it started, like uh, I had like 12 shirts made and they were like heat pressed. So was that like the first, yep. first edition for you guys? One shirt at a time. Yeah. And I, I mean, there's still stuff that I'll do that's heat pressed. It, it's literally like most of my designs, you know, I, I try to keep them simple one because I can, if I have to, I can make them with a heat press. Um, and two, it, from a cost perspective, you know, the more, the more colors you put into it, the more it costs to get it produced. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I try and keep everything as low as possible. Um, so yeah, I still, I'll still do some heat press stuff. And that's how a lot of my stuff starts. It's like, all right, we'll start on heat press this are coming in where it's stupid to be heat pressing stuff. I'll go get stuff screen printed. Cause I don't do screen printing myself. I have a local um, screen printer here in town who just cranks stuff out when I need it. Um, I've, he'll get done in two days if I need it done. Yeah. I had the like seven shirts for the game last year this, um, that he wanted to do uh, to just to give out to people. They wanted to do a thousand of those for the game. And he literally was like, hey, can you get these done? I'm like, dude, the games is in like four days. Are you serious? <laughs> sure enough, my printer had them had Thanks. Ordered in his shop the next day. In, in about a four day turnaround. Wow. So that's crazy. The printer does a good job. Yeah, yeah. he does a really good job. So it depends on schedule. Yeah, Some stuff takes. But yeah, so with my shirts, like the heat press, I don't know if the guy like heated it too, too little. Like it actually started breaking at like certain certain areas of the lines and stuff like that. It was that typical for you when you first started out like how like what was the learning curve of like doing all this screen printing and like heat pressing literally with with the heat press it was literally like trial and error um i found some of the the bigger name brands as far as the vinyl goes they were freaking terrible i'm like yeah you're a big name this product sucks it doesn't either one it's too thick so you can literally like feel it on there because my goal like if it's anything heat press i want to not even not even notice that it's there Uh just like screen printing um so it was literally trial and error start ordering different brands and figuring out what works um and i've i've found a couple different brands that work really well so that it's been it's been good i haven't had really anything that cracks or peels if it's if it's something that peels it's pretty random and i i try to do my best from the service side and if somebody has an issue they email me and i'll get them and as soon as possible because it's the product fault yeah yeah so what was the biggest like what was the like the oh shit moment like when you got like an, a crazy order for you <laughs> oh the oh shit moment was hiller um <laughs> by far i mean i i couldn't i can't even express like how things change. oh seven and hiller. Mm-hmm. I I hit a golden those two. This was getting to know the right people at the right time because I had talking to Sevon, watching the show um, quite a bit, and some issues that they were having with their 
I learned to do like, hey, I do apparel. If you ever let me know, he he like more than he was just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody says they got do apparel, so I just literally kept nudging him. And finally, he he was like, all right, let's give it a try and see what happens. Um, and it worked out really well. And then Hiller started to kind of make, and it was when Hiller and Sevon were kind of, it was before they had their like whole relationship. Yeah. And, and it was like Hiller versus Sevon at one point. And I, I literally messaged Sevon. I was like, who the fuck is this guy? I think he is. He's a <laughs> dumbass. He does. He can't put it together. That's chop everything up. He can't. It was like two weeks later, Hiller was on the show. Uh, I know exactly what they're doing. <laughs> They've been talking. They know what they're doing. Um, so yeah, it was when he made his shirt, his his original shirt, uh, one of the one of the online printing deals. And he did he did his own shirt in one of his videos. He said, "I need to make a new shirt. If you guys have any ideas, let me know." I just messaged him. I was like, "Hey, I make shirts. If you ever want to do something." let me know. And I, I had redesigned the shirt that he did already. Cause he, he said, I just want to make another version of this in his video. Um, so I did a new version of it, sent it to him and he loved it. And I said, if there's anything you want to do, um, just hit me up. I'm open to new ideas. I don't have all the ideas you want to do. Um, let me know and I'll see what I can do. He told me, he's like, I want to do a no rep shirt that looks like the noble logo. Like, <laughs> shit that's easy enough i i literally sent it to him an hour later and his only words were go i was like nice go? what do you mean go he's like do it like oh okay i said do you like want to work anything out here he's like nope just do it like all right <laughs> so it, it opened the floodgates and that's it was, awesome it was well, so the, i mean as far as pivotal moment that that shirt was the pivotal moment yeah. By so, far. So when you actually were talking to Savon about the CEO shirt, even with Hiller too, because if I like earlier on, I tried to get him on my podcast and I realized he had his cell phone number on Instagram. And so what I did Who was did? Hiller. Savon or No, Hiller. Oh, really? Yeah. And so what I did was <laughs> I actually was texting him. I'm like, hey, man, like, you know, my name's Tom. I have a, a podcast you know come on come on in and like you know i'd love to have you on the show and like no answer and then i think a, a couple yeah. days later he kind of realized his cell phone number was on instagram and so he took it off oh that's hilarious that's hilarious he he's so funny because like he's so in your face on video but in person he's not that way at all he's like mm -hmm. very quiet and self-preserved he's his, I mean, his phone is on constant and it's because so many people have reached out for him. Like you can't get hold of him. Like I'll call him and it immediately goes to voicemail. So I just leave him a message. Same thing. Like if I can get a text from him, it's usually at four in the morning or in the middle of the night. Cause he doesn't get back to anybody here. There was a, there was one of the episodes of Savan's show where they were talking about getting a hold of each other and, and, He's like, well, let's just go through my recents or my my most frequent, see who I get a hold of. And I was on the list. I was like, yes, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I made the list. Yeah, because you're the it shirt was, guy. It was, it was literally like dad, dad, Alexis, Savon, Travis, Savon, 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 Alexis. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I've made the list. So that was pretty cool. Awesome. So And, wow. and I'd never met him. I mean, I I literally didn't meet him until last year. Wow, that's um, crazy. Or no, when was it? Yeah, in, uh, oh God, when was that? November, I think. I was going to Masters Fitness Collective to do a booth and I had to drive just south of Chicago. And I sent him a message and I said, hey, I'm coming for you. <laughs> He's like, where are you? I said, I'm south of Chicago. I'm heading to Indiana. He's like, are you serious? Stop over. So got his address and drove up to Chicago, to Chicago real quick and said hello. So he didn't even put you in one of his YouTube videos at all since you were already over there. What do you mean? So like you were at his house or you, you met him up, met up with him. He didn't he didn't want to put yeah. you in a YouTube video with you. No, we didn't make a video while we were there. We just, we took some photos real quick. Cause I was literally on my way to, oh, okay. to, to Fort Wayne. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was like an eight hour, what was it? 
yeah, six and a half hours, I think, by the time I got to Chicago. So it was stopped in for less than an hour. Oh, and I got gotcha. Get the road okay. again. Yeah. Nope, I didn't get to go into videos. I did see, I got to see the Bat Cave. So that was cool. Nice. That's really cool. And uh, I see the space. So have you, have you met Savon in person yet? No, nobody's met Savon. He doesn't like going either. out. I don't. Why doesn't he like no. going out? He doesn't need. He just likes to stay home. Yeah, little home he's just body. Just to stay at home. Yeah, and he's gotten to that point now where he, I don't, he'd be like Hiller. He can't go anywhere. You know, if he goes to a CrossFit, he's just going to get swarmed by people. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was that's kind of how Hiller was at uh, at Wadapalooza. He was just constantly talking to people. No, I can. He imagine. would literally like come. He would let it like run to the booth and then duck behind because the my booth um, it backed up to the athlete area. So he would run into the booth and then duck behind the backside so he could eat and hang out a little bit. Him and him and left. So it was, it was I was a little hideout for him. It was very cool. Nice. But yeah, I mean, I think Seven would be the same way. Like he he's yeah he's a lot of killer. He's like I can talk when the like cameras on, but. Inner, mm-hmm. when, when I'm with people, I don't want to talk to people. Yeah, yeah. But they do. They do good. Hiller does a great job of interacting with people. That's good. That's good. So, um, you were cool. talking about um going to like the Master Fitness Collective <laughs> and like get, doing a booth. Yeah. So, like, how like what's the logistics of you like setting up a booth at, at an event? Like, how does how does that work? Do you kind of like do like a month in advance and say like, hey. I may want to consider, you know, these amount of shirts, like this amount of sweatshirts or whatever, and then kind of, you know, set up the booth that way. So how does it, how does it work? Yeah, that's, that's been a learning experience. I lucked out. Um, I'm trying to remember exactly. Cause I, I didn't doing any booths till last year. Um, and that was one of those deals that Gabe from paper street talked me into. Um, we had, ended up, I think it was master's fitness collective. He's like, Hey, I'm going to be there you should go. And I'm like, dude, I don't know. That's, I've, I've never done booth, booth before. Mm. Um, so there was, you know, there's the booth fee, there's travel. There was literally that I had no booth. I had to buy the booth. I had to get a shitload of stuff screen printed um, and ready to go for it. And I actually lucked out um, because there were two local competitions um, probably like a month or so before that that I ended up getting a hold of and got booths for those spaces. So there was literally like this nice little trial run right to it. So for, so for those, I got the booth ordered. Um, so I got that cost out of the way, was able to figure out like tables and displays and how much stuff to bring. And like my, that first one, it, it was literally like one table, one rack, a, you know, a 10 foot square booth set up outside. Um, and I look back at the pictures and I'm like, how in the world did I even survive with this? Cause I, I've told everybody now, it's like, if I can't get a 10 by 20 space, I can't come. Mm-hmm. Cause that like Wadapalooza was just chaotic as far as the, it was great traffic, but the booth set up, I only had a 10 by 10 space and it was just chaos with like where everything was and, and how I had to set everything up because I had so much stuff. And I had to cram it into this 10 by 10 space. Like I will never do that again. Yeah. This, this is driving me nuts because there's just shit everywhere. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was, it was trial and error, figuring out what kind of racks to order, what size tables, what height tables, what kind of tables, do I need table covers? Do I need displays that go behind the tables? All that kind of stuff. Um, so I, yeah, I lucked out having those two competitions before master's fitness because that was up until then that was that was a big commitment that was 11 hours driving to get down there i had to borrow my dad's truck Mm -hmm. to get everything down there and i literally had that truck packed from the entire bed the inside of the cab it was a crew cab so the entire cab the passenger side is like filled with boxes and containers and, and everything um so yeah after that one we did and again, it was Gabe talking to you. And I, I literally like would not do these. One of them has paid off. Like everyone's gotten bigger and better. Um, so after that, when we did, we did the Charlotte Classic, uh, Taylor Self competition um, in Charlotte, North Carolina. So that was like the first experience of actually shipping 
an ordeal when you don't have a warehouse with a loading dock, I learned, mm-hmm. uh, is a giant pain in the because it costs you almost a thousand dollars more oh, to geez. ship everything yeah. when you don't have a loading dock. Uh, so again, it's a, it was, it was a learning experience. It's the way it goes. So that, yeah, that was my first experience with like packing because you literally have to get everything on a pallet and ship it out there a week ahead of time. And then it gets there, you do the competition and then you don't get it back for another week. So there's a, it's, it's very nerve wracking when you, and you know, you're trying to run an online business at the same time. So I literally like, I just put messages out on Instagram and on the website that, Hey, just letting everybody know from this date to this date, orders are going to be delayed and it's going to take possibly two weeks before I can ever get anything shipped out. Mm-hmm. Cause I either, I either don't have it or I'm at home or I'm not home. Yeah. Um, so I can't send it out because I, it's literally just me that does all the work. So yeah. And, and your yeah, daughter's once and your daughter's one and your daughter's once in a while you uh, work for you too, right? To get paid. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. They love helping out. They did. We just did a competition a couple of weeks ago, just over in Des Moines, Iowa. And were, those were long days and they they had a ball. We went in, set up a 10 by 20 space, and they worked the booth all weekend. I gave them a break here and there. But yeah. they they were it was funny because they were they both after the first day, I mean it was it was probably a 10 hour day, um, on the first day, you know, standing around and stuff. And they said they both in the middle of the night woke up and their calves were cramping because they <laughs> from around all day. Yep. That's the way it goes. Yep. That, yep. That's, I was, I had flashbacks of Wadapalooza because those were, those were 12 to 14 hour days of nonstop standing around and, oh my God, my legs, my body, everything hurt. You wouldn't, yeah. you wouldn't think you would hurt that much work in a booth. And I'm glad I didn't, I, I would, I would look at like the volunteers and stuff doing the workouts afterwards and like, hell no, there is no way nope. I'm exhausted. Yeah. Very cool. So, um, I, I always kind of like, so when I started this, this shirt company, I, I kind of looked at a couple other shirt companies to kind of get, um, you know, ideas flowing and kind of like the way I kind of want to look like have some of my clothes to look. Yeah. So do, did yep. you have some of those like, you know, like clothing lines that you kind of like di- didn't want to copy, but like kind of looked and said, I like their style. I like the way they do like their product and, you know, kind of go from there. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of them that I, and I still do. I look around, there's a lot of them that I'm like, okay, I like what they do. I like a lot of it, not so much design, but like materials. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. What are they doing now? Like, like this that I have on now is, is pretty new and it's got like a thick, it's almost like a thick rubber material, but it makes it stand off um, the sweatshirt. So it works really good, like for sweatshirts and, and joggers and that kind of stuff. Yep. It's not something I'd use on a t-shirt because it is thicker, but it gives a little bit more of that premium um, look and feel. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's a lot more just, like I said, not so much design wise, because some of the stuff I'm like, that stuff is freaking terrible. Why are you doing it? But you go, you do you. Yep. Um, and, you know, I mean, there's a lot of them that I look up to in it and it, it's that, you know, comparison is the thief of joy type of thing. It's like, okay, they've been doing this for a while. Stop thinking you can do that. And, and I've, I've really tried to expand products away, not, not away from, but beyond just t-shirts because anybody can do t-shirts. I'm, yep. I'm no rocket scientist by any means. It isn't that freaking hard to make t-shirts. You just got to have the drive to do it and invest in a little bit of time and materials. Um, it's the things like the, like the women's, the women's stuff I've really started to expand, like the women's joggers, the leggings, the shorts, um, sports bra. So it's literally, it's finding the sources for them for the most part, knowing who to get a hold of, um, what the turnaround times are going to be like and, and seeing what else you can expand to that people are going to like. Yeah. Um, and the, another big thing is like pricing, making sure you price it right. I look at some of this stuff and like, my God, the amount of money that these people are charging for this stuff. I'm like I in good faith can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe that makes me a bad businessman. I don't know, but I just, I can't do it. Yeah. It, so, it's, it's crazy. Like I've, I've seen some shirts go for like $40 and I'm like, you have like little, like one, 
little design on like right in like the you know the left like the the left chest yeah. it's like yeah forty dollars yep. like it's like insane it's crazy and i know a lot of that stuff you know depending on the brand i know you know i give noble a lot of shit for what they do and a lot of people like to pile on um but i know they source materials i mean i can't say much for their fit but i know like their materials like their camos and stuff like that from what i know they i mean they literally have that stuff made so it costs more for mm -hmm. them to make it it's not just an off-the-shelf t-shirt that they can go buy and then throw their logo on it they have to invest money into it um so i've i've kind of learned along the way like okay i'm going to back off a little bit of how much crap i'm gonna give <laughs> some of these companies yep some yeah. of them not all of them i'll always give noble crap yeah um so do you ever like look into your like little room the hat like you have like all your your stash and everything like that and you're like all this inventory and you're like i got i gotta sell this stuff like do you ever get nervous when you see like large amounts of inventory i've learned so i i i learned after early on with some stuff like order small because you can always order more uh it's a it's a big error that a lot of people make and yeah you're gonna you're gonna save money by ordering more but you're most likely gonna sit on it for quite a while and, mm -hmm. and it's figuring out sizing there's no science to it there's no science to color schemes or sizing you're gonna order a hundred larges and everybody's gonna want smalls you're gonna turn around and order a hundred smalls and all of a sudden everybody wants extra large yep um so yeah, I made that mistake early on and I've got some stuff that I'm sitting on that I'm like, I can't even give it away because it's just one of those things that isn't selling right now. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it's usually like for the t-shirts, it's the small and the, you know, not knowing how they would sell in the beginning ordered double XLs because I thought, well, people love it. Everybody's going to order these. So I got to order a bunch of every size and it was, and it, you know, figured out basically with t-shirts, it's your large, large is going to be your biggest seller for women's yep. tanks. Your small to medium is going to be your biggest seller. And then you order a few of each of the other ones. And then when it comes down to it, order more if you have to, because I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 not, I'm by no means in a, in a spot to order thousands of everything and all, you know, just to get that cost break. It's not worth it for me. Mm -hmm. So I'll order 15 larges, 10 mediums, 10 XLs, five smalls, five extra larges, and I'll just order more if I have to. Very cool. That's um, the way it goes. So did you have any designs that you thought were like, like, oh man, this is going to sell. This is a killer design. And like, it just come flat out, like just did not, did not, not go well. There's been a few. Yeah. And I mean, there's been a few for for you know even Savon and Hiller I was like this thing's gonna explode and then <laughs> like guys why do I still have inventory what the hell's going on here mm -hmm. it's again it's there's no science you have no idea what anybody's gonna like yeah basically like if, if I do something for Hiller I know it's gonna do pretty well um but it's still just kind of dependent on the time of the year too you know like right now we just came out with the the new no rep ones um, and those have done well because the opens right here and thank thankfully there's been like more events per se going on throughout the year where there's not as many ups and downs like there used to be whereas like this yep. dead complete dead dead space there's like always something going on and andrew does a good job of making things go on <laughs> when there's nothing going on <laughs> yeah exactly exactly and Sevon too i mean my god with, with Sevon doing freaking shows every day He's, he's There's unreal. always stuff going on. I, it's, I mean, I would love to, I, I, you know, I listen to his podcast, probably the most out of any CrossFit podcast. Cause the main thing is, yep. is like, he always has something new and like, yep. and he always has, he always sets time. It's like, it's crazy. Cause like he always pumps out stuff and it's like constantly going and going and going and like, and it's like, how does this guy able to like manage to like, you know, have a team and then like, like fill in all this stuff it's insane yeah yeah it's it's cool like to to see how it's grown like because it's it, and he said it before on the show it's like there is no like organized team and and you have this role and you have this role it was mm -hmm. it's literally 
if you have an idea and bring it to him and he sees value in it and you're going to work it, then he's all for it. He, it's basically don't bring me a problem. Bring <laughs> yeah. me solutions. Like yeah. you can bring me a problem, but make sure you have a solution for it. And that was, that was one of the things that just kind of rang a bell with, with the shirts. There was, there was issues and I, and I was like, Hey, I can do shirts for you. But, but there wasn't like a, definitive solutions like okay i can do solutions or i can do shirts and here's how i'm going to do it Mm -hmm. then he was like all right let's go so it's literally like don't you know and that's that's the case with basically any job or any manager like don't bring me problems yeah unless you have a solution yeah because he's got too much going on yeah exactly i mean he's got the show to run he's got kids he's got a wife he's got stuff going on like I, I can't do it all. And, and Matt's the same way. I think, I think I probably talked to Matt Souza um, more so than Savon in the early, early on. It was like, all right, you got to come, come to the table with something. Don't just, don't present us a problem and expect us to tell you how to fix it. Mm-hmm. You go fix it. Yeah, exactly. Now um, with you doing the t-shirts and working a full-time job and being a dad, how do you balance all that stuff all at once. Cause that, that's crazy. That's a lot of work for like all three things. Oh, yeah. is this? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's no, I have no balance. Um, I, I, I shouldn't say, I mean, there's, there's discipline. I literally, and I've, I've kind of lucked out cause the, the uh, girl that I work out with her, her job, she has to be there fairly early. So I literally like started going to the gym early because of her job. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that has just, has carried on um over the years so it's up at 4 15 4 20 in the morning same here um get get into the gym by five to get workouts done because she's got to get to work um so we're 30 about six so then i home get you know get changed get hard get kids to school go to work mm-hmm. all day and then I'm, I mean, it's kind of like that blessing with, with the age that my kids now <laughs> with, with business because I can I'm able to do it mm-hmm. and they're, or they want to you know, have food on the table. And <laughs> other than if we got some activities to go to. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, it's get home, work on shirts till sometimes 10 30 at night and then i'm in bed doing it all again the next day mm-hmm. i've learned to uh take rest days on sundays and thursdays for the most part those are usually like the scheduled rest days um because gotta have a break every once in a while and you know take advantage of sleeping for maybe two more hours yeah exactly but there's <laughs> yeah there there is no eight hours of sleep or anything like that and, and it's I, I think that's where a lot of people basically screw it up it's like there's these are the years that are just gonna flat out suck they're gonna be freaking hard and they're gonna blow and you're gonna have to get up early you're gonna have to work late you're gonna have to live it and breathe it and Mm -hmm. it's just the way it is or it's never gonna happen that's i listen to i don't know if you listen to andy frazella um his podcast quite a bit uh he has the uh, it's the real AF and he used to have the MF CEO project. He's the, he's the, owner oh, of First yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I've, I've listened to his podcast before. Yeah. Yeah. And he's, he's very much like the, the vast majority of businesses don't make it because they give up. They don't want to do the work and they quit. It's like, well, I'm not going to do that. You just got to put in the work mm-hmm. and it sucks. There are days that I'm dragging ass and I drink a lot of paper street coffee and energy drinks to get me through the day. Sometimes it's just the way it goes. <laughs> and I don't I regret you. it. I love doing it. I mean, it's the thing I love doing it. Cause I, I literally get with, with my job, it's casual. So I can wear t-shirts, sweatshirts, whatever. So I literally just wear my shit. And, you know, I'm a walking billboard. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's great for the business. Expense. Pretty much everything I do. Um, just you gotta live it it's just and i don't think it's ever end unfortunately no matter how big you get mm-hmm. you still gotta you still gotta breathe it maybe yep. i'll get to breathe once in a while 
<laughs> Very cool. Get so, somebody else to fill some orders once in a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, that's one of my questions later on. But like, um, are you doing the open this year? I'm not. So I've had to change quite a bit of training um, since I've been battling an injury for a couple of years. Um, and then everything really flared up in November. I got a, I had what we finally figured out. I got an MRI, did a CAT scan. Uh, I have a pinched nerve herniated disc uh, in my C7. Or, uh, yeah, C7 basically from my four down to my seven. So I already have my, my C2 and C3 are fused uh, from that accident from years ago. Um, and then there's, it's just wear and tear. I have hereditary uh, spinal stenosis, which is narrowing of the spinal column. Mm -hmm. um, so what that does, like your nerves and everything run through the spinal column of when it's, when you have stenosis, it's narrowed. So when you have a herniated disc, there's no room for those nerves when that when that disc pushes on it it basically pushes the nerve against the wall of your spinal column and there's nowhere for it to go um so i just i a few years ago i did a, a burpee competition and i started getting it just felt like something was pinched my shoulder, like in my scap of my shoulder blade uh -huh. done physical therapy and chiropractic and stuff and go away. Uh, and then this past November did a workout and it just got worse and worse. And I started getting feeling and numbness in my uh, my right arm. And my arm falls asleep. And surprisingly, sitting here at this table, I don't usually sit. I'm I'm pretty much always standing. Yeah. Um, because sitting seemed to affect it when my when my arms are out in front of me is when it was bothering it the most. So like sitting at a dinner table, or driving, something stuff like that. Just sit. Um, so I, I, like I said, I would start getting this, the pain back the shoulder and the arm would start to go dumb right down and I wouldn't lose function of it. It just like, pins and needles. Uh -huh. Um, and then I started to notice my, my tricep was getting smaller and I, I was losing strength on my right side. I touched to where I'd like, I know it was like, all right, I'm going to do just some dumbbell bench one like, super light grab some 15s i'm just gonna do a super super i got them overhead and i started to lower it and i almost myself in the forehead with the dumbbell because i started to lower it and it just it completely dropped so yeah to that point where that so that it's it shut off um so found out through mri and uh, meet with the uh the doctors i'm gonna be having surgery hopefully soon because i need to get it taken care of we're just trying to figure out which surgery is going to be the best bet uh -huh. um there's a they're they're kind of talking about doing another fusion which i do not want to do um because they're talking going four five six and seven fusing and i'm like well that sounds a little extreme because once you fuse it you can't go back there's no there's no turning back from that um so there's another procedure, I, I can't remember exactly, like called a lar larynectomy, something like that, where they basically cut out a piece of the bone on your spine and it, and it hinges open. And then they put the steel plate in there that, to oh. hold it. So it basically just gives your spinal column more room. It gives it like this little buffer area to push out of. Yeah. Um, so kind of leaning towards that. That's, that's the direction I would like to go. Cause I, the fusion is just going to suck. I mean, I'm not going to be able to turn the head <laughs> for the most part. And I'm not, I'm too young for that. Yeah. Too young and too active. Yeah. Um, so no, my, my training's changed quite a bit. I haven't done a snatch or a clean since November. Uh, basically anything overhead, I have to be super careful with like, like a literally a 15 pound dumbbell overhead is on this side trying just stabilizing is really hard mm -hmm. so a lot more bodybuilding style workouts lately which gives the rest of my body time to recover my butt's looking really good hey, that's all that, that's all that matters you know <laughs> right? you go to the I'm go to the beach for summer yeah you get go to the beach and like you drop something and like you're on the beach and just like get your little bathing suit like like yeah, just exactly. whip, whip out your butt so you just bend over and pick that up here <laughs> <laughs> so no, no, not doing the open. I, I 
I haven't really done it. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I'm trying to think if I did it last year. I think I did do. I don't know if I signed up for it last year, but I think I did some of the workouts. Mm-hmm. I'm just I'm getting old. I'm shit. I'm 47 now, and my body. I didn't start CrossFit until I was 40. Yeah. And it was like, you know, typical. You fall in love with it, so you do two, three workouts a day for, for years. And then your body starts to go, Hey, you can't do that anymore. Yep. We're going to start shutting off. So I've, I've had to tone it down quite a bit. And it's not a bad uh, thing. Not a bad thing. No, no. It's, it's amazing how you can actually stay fit doing one workout a day. Mm-hmm. You don't have to drive yourself into the ground. Even it's fun. It's fun to do as long as there's no running. Yep. It's fun. <laughs> Awesome. I used to be a runner. I don't want to do running anymore. Yeah, I, I'm the same way. I used to do triathlons, and I have like no desire to run uh, anymore. I'm like, I'm good. No, no thanks. No, but uh, no, I'm good. So uh, we're getting close to the end. Uh, so I have some rapid fire questions. I always say they're oh, rapid right. fire, but they're not really rapid fire. So you can take as long as you want on these questions. <laughs> um, okay. So, um, do you have any goals for yourself or, or vindicate or like pretty much anything for the rest of the end of the year? My, yeah. I mean, my goal for this year, this year specifically is take it full time. Mm-hmm. I mean, that is by far the goal, um, that I want to hit and I'm hoping to do it sooner rather than later. The surgery kind of threw a whole wrench into everything. Um, Cause I was feeling like it was getting pretty close. Uh, but yeah, surgery is going to kind of mess all that up. Um, luckily my, my, my job's flexible. Um, they are totally cool yeah. with me needing the time that I need, or if I need to be out of town for a competition, I'm, I'm good at getting my work done. So it's not like I leave them hanging by any means. Um, but no, I mean, that's, that's probably big goal for this year. Um, other than that, I would like to start getting some athletes on board. Um, and it's not even so much like the big athletes. It's like these young up and comers that are, that need help for mm-hmm. the most part. Um, Cause I, I know what it's like. I I've needed help and I've had people help me out. So if I can get behind them, cool. I'm all for it. Nice. And whether, whether it's an athlete or I hate the word influencer, um, but you know, just people who are trying to do something in the, you know, like Roderick from Meme mm-hmm. for time. I mean, that those guys are awesome. So if I can help them out, um, I'm all for it. Okay. All right. Very cool. Um, next question. What is your favorite book? Ooh, I don't read. I'm really bad. I don't have time to read. Um, <laughs> I think the last book I finished was probably Ready Player One, and that was a long time ago. Uh, it was good. I don't know. I don't <laughs> okay. read. I don't read. Well, you're you're way too busy, so you don't do like books on tapes I, or anything like that, or like like. I try to, but I just I can't because my mind's always going. I literally, if I'm listening to a book on tape, it's when I'm mowing the lawn. Because mm-hmm. even when I'm driving, I can't focus on them. But when for some reason when I'm mowing, mowing the lawn, I can. <laughs> But I, I'm, I'm very much a busy body. I'm not good at just sitting around. Yep. Um, so if I read, I usually fall asleep. So I don't get very far. I'm, yeah. There's there's some books that people have ran and raved about and I start reading them like, oh, that's, that's, that's why? I, I don't get it. I can't, <laughs> I can't do it. Uh, okay. I like drawing stuff. I like, I like making pretty pictures. Okay. Okay. All right. What's your, what's, your, like what's your favorite graphic design program? Ooh, uh, probably Illustrator, just because everything I do design-wise, I need it. I know a lot of people say Photoshop, but if you're doing Photoshop for your shirt designs, you're doing it wrong. For the most part, you better start using Illustrator if you want to screen print something. Mm-hmm. Run into that plenty of times where people send me a design. Can you print or can you get this printed? It's like, uh, no, because you didn't use the right program to do it. Mm-hmm. It can't be done unless you want me to redraw this whole thing. Yeah, and it's going to cost no, you extra. It's not happening. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, probably Illustrator. Okay. Okay. Cool. So uh, next question: What is in your gym bag? Oh God, <laughs> not much anymore. Um, <laughs> some protein, some uh, hydrosalt. 
my knee sleeves for sure because i do a lot more squatting knee sleeves belt my grips are sitting on a shelf in my closet now because i can't do any pull-ups because mm-hmm. i can only pull with one side <laughs> uh i don't know there's a lot of miscellaneous stuff and there are a lot of bands um uh, oh god i can't think of the name of it. when i when i was doing more pull-ups i have a i can't think of the name of it it's a it's basically a metal tube that has sandpaper glued to it so you can shave your calluses you can oh, literally grind yeah. your calluses down yeah um yeah that thing works pretty well but no, I don't, I used to have like my lifting shoes and all that stuff. And I kind of trained myself away from wearing lifters. Like, okay, your mobility is not going to get better if you use lifters. Uh-huh. So I pretty much have my, my tier training shoes, which I love. Um, I've kind of gone back and forth on different shoes. I was a nano guy forever um, until the X came out, which I, I liked the X, but they were just so dang heavy um and they haven't really fixed the weight and then the few designs after that were garbage so once i found the tier she was like okay i like these i'm gonna stick with these for a while nice very cool so they've worked out really well awesome here if you ever want to send me shoes yeah go for it <laughs> all right next question uh this is going to be a little deep so um let's just say it's your last day on earth <coughs> um and you have all your friends around you how do you want people to know you as Oh God, you dropped this one on game. Um, I, I do it. To, I do it to I, all my. I do it to all my guests. Yeah. I don't know. I. It, for most people, I wouldn't know that I cared that I worked hard. Um, cared in the sense that I'm doing some stuff with a purpose and not just because it makes some money. I mean, the money's cool, but there's got to be a, a deeper purpose than that. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, the big thing for me, like I've, I've worked at being 47, I've worked different jobs for different companies and big companies, small companies. And I've, I've kind of hit this point where I want to do something that my kids can be proud of, mm-hmm. you know, that they can look back on, like, you know, dad actually did something with his life and he, and he did it not just for himself, but for them, um, you know, to, to hopefully leave them with something cool in the end, uh, that, you know, that's probably my biggest goal right now. It's like, see where I can go with this thing okay. and, and have something for them to be proud of. Cause I mean, that's a, that's a big thing that every parent wants. They, they want good kids and they want their kids to be proud of what they did. Mm-hmm. And that, that's like the big, the big thing with like, trying to make this go full time is the fear because you know with with the ages my kids are at it's a it's a scary freaking thought to be like okay you're gonna jump off this cliff and there's nothing there to catch you Mm -hmm. you you gotta either learn how to fly or you're in trouble um so i've juggled that quite a bit i've got a lot of good people around me that say yeah you'll figure it out (laughs) And I, I listen to a lot of podcasts. I want, you know, a lot of videos of people who have, who've started companies and that's literally all they say. It's like, there's never going to be a right time. Yep. You're just, yep. you'll figure it out. There's going to be shitty times. There's going to be really good times and you, fi- you figure it out or you don't. Yep. And that, that, especially with my field of work, like, all right, cool. If I don't figure it out, I can find a job. Mm-hmm. There's something out there that I can do. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. Yeah. My, my, that's, that's the big thing. Yeah. My motto that I always go for is screw it, just do it. So that was from Richard Branson. He had a book out uh, called screw it, just do it. And so that's how I did it. Cause like when I started, you know, the podcast, I was just like, all right, I'll start it here or whatever. Let's start to do it here. Even the t-shirt, it's like, uh, you know, I'll wait another week to start it. It's like, no, just, just do it now. Just, you gotta do it. yeah, just pull the trigger. Just go for it. Yeah. And that's like I said earlier with, with you either have a guest or you don't, Mm -hmm. you might get five listeners, you might get a hundred. It's, it's consistency. And that's what both Savon and Hiller have literally been like, all right, we're going to do a show. We're going to do an episode every day, period. There is Mm -hmm. no ifs, ands, or buts. It has to happen. I think, I don't think Hiller's missed an episode yet. Nope. Um, Savon's maybe missed one or two just because of traveling, but it's, it's just, you got to do it. 
and that's you know like with my shirts it's been one shirt at a time at, at early on it was literally one shirt at a time mm -hmm. an order would come in and i'd go make it and send it off and just hope another one comes in and in the meantime i was making my own designs and making my own stuff just learning as i went along like okay these materials don't work these do and that's just it's practice and discipline Awesome. Awesome. Very cool. So the last question is, um, where can people reach out to you if they have any questions about starting their own t-shirt company or pretty much like how the whole process works? Um, I'm, like I said, early, early in the show, I'm pretty open. Um, email info at com. Um, all my social media channels, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook are all just at Vindicate, uh, VNDK8. So I'm pretty easy to get a hold of. Um, Sevon's podcast, whenever he is live, I'm usually in the chat. <laughs> Probably saying more things than I should as a business owner, but I've I've learned to back off a little bit. Because <laughs> <laughs> I can I can sometimes say some things that I might not say or probably shouldn't say, mm -hmm. but I do. <laughs> so if you want some entertainment, you can learn from my mistakes sometimes. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I listen, thank you very much for coming on the show. I really do appreciate it. And like, I was awesome just kind of, you know, learning about like your whole life and you know, how many, how much stuff we have in common. And, uh, yeah, yeah it, was, no it was awesome. Anytime, anytime. I have fun doing it. It's fun chatting it up. All right. Well, it's probably a million things we didn't cover. But oh yeah. I did. Trust me. I, for I, the I, next show. Yeah. We're doing the next, we're doing another show. So, but thank cool. you again for cool. doing this. Absolutely. Thank you.